Hi, welcome to Gospel with Greg, and this is the second video in my historical thinking series within Gospel with Greg. The subject of this video is going to be uh, historically uh, analyzing religions, and so um, this video is going to address the uh, ideas that Christianity cannot be verified, uh, verified historically uh, in particular, um, and that all religions are equally valid or invalid. Um, and uh, that point in particular um, is quite an interesting point uh, because people on both sides of the uh, spectrum could uh, embrace that idea. So um, you have uh, some skeptics that would say uh, to this idea that all religions are equally valid that might say they all have no evidence you know uh, all religions Christianity included uh, it is just blind faith uh, but then there are people on the other side of the spectrum the more spiritual spectrum um, that will say you know all paths lead to God or uh, all religions have an element of truth in them um, so, you have people on both sides that will uh, try to essentially uh, make this claim that uh, all religions kind of have equal evidence. Uh, but from a historical perspective, uh, we can see that's not the case. So the learning objective um, for this video at the top here is identifying and analyzing the historical validity of different religions, kind of uh, learning the mindset of how to do that. Um, so uh, first big concept uh, to understand with this of how we can look at different religions and say that you know one is more valid than the others. Um, the case that I'll make here that Christianity um, is more valid. We can how we can know historically um, it's more valid than other religions. Uh, so, uh, first point uh, that ties into that is uh, if a religion uh, makes a historical claim um, that appears to be false, that gives an indication that the religion is false. Um, and if it hinges on a historical claim that appears to be true when analyzed historically, that gives an indication that the religion uh, is true. And so, uh, we can see that here um, in the middle if you uh, uh, analyze these religions. So again, if the historical claims uh, that they make when analyzed seem to be true, that adds validity to the religion. Um, if they appear to be false, uh, they lose validity, uh, historically speaking, and kind of just in general. Um, and so with Christianity in particular, it absolutely uh, makes uh, historical claims, and the biggest one is the resurrection of Jesus. And so we see in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, verse 14, uh, that if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. And so this tells us that uh, whether the resurrection of Jesus after his death on the cross um, is true or not uh, affects whether Christianity is true or not. And so again we have that summarized here. The resurrection happened, Christianity is true. If the resurrection did not happen, then Christianity would be false. Uh, so there's a very clear uh, test here in the Bible. Uh, the Bible tells us uh, essentially this faith hinges on this historical claim if this um, historical event occurred or not uh, depends on uh, well, it determines uh, whether the religion is true or not and also another thing that goes along with that is uh, if the resurrection of Jesus did occur um, and Christianity is true that would mean that Christianity is the only true religion. And so there is a um, scriptural reference here uh, being Galatians uh, chapter 2 verse 21. Um, 
I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So when we look at um, this verse, as well as uh, other verses and passages in the New Testament, we see this claim from Christianity that uh, Jesus is the only truth, the only way to heaven, uh, things like that. And so uh, that's not conducive uh, for other religions to be true. Because again, as we mentioned at the beginning, uh, there is the claim by some uh, that want to syncretize religions that, oh yeah, Christianity uh, is true, but so is Buddhism and Hinduism, Islam, uh, many other religions, people will try to say that they're all true. Um, the New Testament and Christianity uh, says that um, essentially if Christ is the Son of God, if he died on the cross for our sins, uh, resurrected uh, ultimately that that is the only truth and so uh, when we look at this um, we can see that um, Christianity by definition uh, the way it defines itself is if you are going to embrace this as true then you have to fully embrace it. You have to embrace it um, as the only truth or you're not really practicing Christianity if you try to mix other things uh, in there as well. Um, it kind of uh, flies in the face of the definition. You're not really being faithful uh, to the definition of Christianity um, if you mix in these other religions with it. And so uh, that kind of goes along with another um, thought, which is um, that the claims of Christianity, including the uh, historical claims, uh, actually contradict uh, the historical claims of some other religions. So probably uh, the biggest example uh, that I can think of uh, is that of Christianity and Islam. So in Christianity and Islam, Jesus is considered um, a figure in both religions. Um, in Christianity, uh, Jesus is the divine Son of God, and the Messiah who came to die on the cross for our sins and ultimately resurrected. Um, in Islam, um, Jesus is considered to be a prophet sent by Allah. Um, but Muslims uh, do not believe uh, that Jesus died uh, on the cross. And as a result, they also do not believe that Jesus rose from the dead because he didn't uh, die on the cross according to them. And so uh, you have certain uh, claims uh, even in the Quran and uh, just Islamic uh, theology uh, that say, you know, pretty much outright, Jesus did not die on the cross, Jesus did not claim to be God, uh, things like that. And so we can see when we compare um, the historical claims of Christianity and the historical claims of Islam, we see that it has to be one or the other. Um, these two religions simply cannot uh, be equally valid, equally historically valid, uh, because the historical claims, again, are contradictory. Um, so, take for example the crucifixion. Um, so again, Christianity's historical claim on that is very strongly it happened. Not only did it happen, but it is uh, one of the major events uh, in the New Testament. One of the most major uh, historical events um, and theological events. Um, and Islam uh, again says that that did not happen um, and so again it has to be one or the other either Jesus died by crucifixion or he did not either he resurrected uh, after dying on the cross or he did not he either claimed divinity or he did not so uh, these things uh, these examples show that um, 
as another uh, example that when we look at different religions through a historical lens, we can see um, uh, these different claims and analyze them. And that is probably um, the example I just gave of uh, Christianity and Islam's uh, historical claims about Jesus, who he was and what he did. Uh, that is a more concrete uh, example uh, to look at of one uh, has to be wrong. Uh, either he died on the cross or he did not. And so um, that is going to uh, add points, uh, so to speak, uh, it, for the uh, validity of one religion or the other, um, depending on uh, which one turned out to be right. And so, uh, when it comes to this issue in particular, uh, most scholars, whether they be Christian, uh, atheist, agnostic, what have you, um, side strongly with not only did Jesus exist, but yes, he did die on the cross. Of course, atheist and agnostic scholars aren't going to say that Jesus was the divine son of God, and they don't believe in the resurrection um, for uh, various reasons um, but they do strongly side uh, with the uh, crucifixion of Jesus and so that's considered pretty much a historical fact um, just in uh, in history in ancient history um, so that would add validity uh, to the uh, Christian historical claims about Jesus that when we look historically at those claims that the Bible makes about Jesus uh, and what he did, we can look at uh, the crucifixion of Jesus, um, his death uh, on the cross. Um, as an example, we can look at that historically and say, yeah, that checks out. Um, so that uh, adds uh, to the validity of Christianity and so um, when we look at the Bible as well we see uh, more historical details that we are able to use and verify uh, not all religions do this equally um, some religions kind of have their stories of what happened uh, but more in a tone of a long time ago you know such and such happened it's not strongly tied uh, into history. So you have kind of these long ago um, stories um, along with uh, their philosophical ideas, maybe um, reincarnation um, in maybe some Eastern religions, things like that. But Christianity, uh, when we read the New Testament, Old Testament as well, uh, we see um, genealogies, we see names of rulers, names of a lot of different places, a lot of different dates, um, you know, some calendar information, um, and so events as well. Um, so there is a lot of historical details that we can look at in the Bible um, to verify, you know, did these happen? So Christianity, um, whether someone accepts Christianity as true or not, um, something that can objectively be agreed upon is Christianity is more easily able to be tested and verified historically than other religions are. A lot of other religions are. Um, and so um, I have some other videos, uh, most prominently um, historical evidence for the resurrection of Jesus that talks specifically about uh, the actual evidence uh, for the resurrection of Jesus because we've talked a lot here about um, how um, essentially historically speaking um, it is fair to say from a historical standpoint that some religions or a religion uh, can be more valid uh, than other religions um, they're not uh, equally valid but in terms of what's the evidence that Christianity actually is uh, more valid. Um, again, I have uh, some of those other videos, but kind of just a short argument here uh, to kind of uh, 
supplement this information is we have um, some basic facts um, that are accepted about Jesus even by um, secular scholars so things like Jesus existed um, he died on the cross um, his followers um, genuinely believe they saw him risen um, for reasons such as they were willing to die uh, for their claim that they saw him risen um, and also enemies of the gospel uh, like Paul and James were not only converted but that they genuinely believed they saw him risen as well um, and again they were willing to die for it suffer other kinds of persecution um, it's kind of why that's accepted again even among secular scholars and you have other uh, facts as well but those are a few prominent ones and so the resurrection of Jesus would explain all of those facts um, if Jesus was the divine son of God died on the cross and rose from the dead uh, of course that explains um, uh, him dying on the cross that fits very well and if he genuinely resurrected that would explain why both his followers and enemies of the gospel uh, would believe they saw him risen uh, but you have these alternative theories people come up with um, that really none of them uh, fit the facts uh, fit those facts I just mentioned um, as well as other um, facts that are accepted um, so uh, the idea for example that someone just stole the body um, you know and that's they would say oh that's why you know they found the tomb empty well that doesn't explain the genuine faith of his followers or the enemies original enemies of the gospel some people say uh, hallucination um, that doesn't really fit it either because you would have to argue that the followers of Jesus experienced a group hallucination that doesn't really happen um, and then also you would have to argue that um, not only did they have a group hallucination but that Paul would have the same hallucination on a separate occasion um, so that's quite improbable um, that that would happen um, and there's a phenomenon where sometimes people will hallucinate dead loved ones and again if they're enemies of the gospel Jesus isn't going to be a loved one and again even among those that he was their loved one group hallucination um, quite improbable isn't something that really happens and so you can go through uh, alternative things like that or another one is that Jesus simply survived crucifixion um, and that explains why they believe they saw him risen because he never actually died uh, well there's problems with that as well because um, people really didn't survive full, uh, full Roman crucifixions um, they would make sure you were dead um, that's the reason why they stabbed him with a spear through the heart to make sure he was dead and uh, also you have the issue of you know Jesus being whipped so many times nails driven through his hands and feet um, this kind of thing um, imagine trying to escape from a tomb in that condition and then convince people that you had risen from the dead um, quite unlikely and certainly doesn't fit the description of how people uh, who said they saw him risen um, doesn't really fit their descriptions of what they said he was like uh, what the interactions were like because you know he would be very bloodied and bashed and clinging uh, barely clinging to life and that's not what we see um, in the accounts of those who said they saw him risen um, and to of course to uh, uh, enemies of the gospel like Paul um, that's not exactly going to be convincing to him um, so uh, resurrection uh, not only fits all the facts uh, but uh, uniquely fits all the facts and so um, so overall we've uh, shown this point that um, you can uh, show that uh, Christianity um, has more validity uh, it doesn't have equal validity with all other religions um, you can kind of disprove this idea that all religions including Christianity are equally valid or invalid um, 
you can challenge that idea uh, from uh, historical analysis as we have done here. So I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, this video um, and I hope to have you join me in the next video and until next time God bless.